We got you stuck off the realness The most infamous, you heard of us Official podcast murderers The show comes equipped with few points to share Grown man ideas for all those who care And wanna grow, so go ahead and download Every single week with a brand new episode You're not alone in this world, cousin So we share information and honest discussion And keep repping a culture like we supposed to They spread gossip but they never come close to I can hear it inside their tone They talk about the industry but never left their home You get laced up with bullet points and such Plus empowering topics that they never would touch You can put your whole network against the team but Super Duty Tough Works, the MVP Most valuable podcast on MP3 Priceless info, but all of it's free huh. So take these words home and think them through Super Duty Tough Work is coming at you You are now listening to Super Duty Tough Work With your host, Blueprint Raw and uncut Adult Conversations no shucking, no jiving, and no bullshit. One, two. Bam. Check, check, check. All right. <laughs> We here, baby. We yeah, here. Wow. Super duty, tough work. That's right, man. This <laughs> with, is something else. With the count. I mean, I, I know the headphones will mess up your hair, though. Nah, well, you know, yeah, hey. I gotta go get my, my get mine out the car. I got my little techniques, but no, nah, okay. it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Should have thought about that ahead of nah, time. It's all good. Runs little earbud joints. You know nah, what I'm saying? It's all good. It's all good. It's all oh, good. luscious, luscious hair. Uh -huh. So we got count base D in the house. Hey, man, Brent, it's back to. It's good to be back in the uh, in effect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the, the last time I came here. I think last time I came to the house yeah. was 2014, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So, yeah. You know, you left your uh, your tour table. Okay, well, it's I, still over there in I, case I, you need I a little. <laughs> <that moment>. <laughs> 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 I think I was getting back on the bus. Yeah, you was like, I ain't taking it. Probably get back. Yeah, I mean, man, <laughs> you, you know, might need it now. I'm telling you, man, that that tour and that experience really set off. You know where I am right now. Be honest with you, I did the, tra the trajectory of my career. Mm -hmm. Had I not gone on the Respect the Architect tour, it would be dramatically different right now. That's amazing. I'm man. serious. You know what I mean? Dramatically I different. And I knew. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I told you. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, listen, I do whatever it, you know what I mean? I yeah. do whatever it takes just to be on this road and yeah. handle my business. You know what I'm saying? I'm not yeah. going to complain. I'm not going to, you know what I'm and saying? And I appreciate that. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I just need to be out here. <laughs> You know what I mean, and and uh, it 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 was, uh, it was a lovely experience for me, man. You know what I mean? It's changed yeah. changed everything. That's crazy. I remember at the time you was like, "Yo, people treat me like I just got signed." Well, I mean, <laughs> the thing about it is, like, <laughs> I don't really know, you know, what what the problem was because it was for me. Yeah. Uh, I'm self-contained, fully self-contained. I didn't yeah. need an entourage. I didn't need anything. Mm -hmm. I'm just another seat on the bus. Yeah. And uh, I felt like I definitely would round out a bill. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but at the same time, when it came time for these tours to go around, you no. know, it was yeah. it was always, and that's when I started realizing it's a little bit of this and it's a little bit of that, you yeah. know? And I said, I, I didn't make sure I got to deal with somebody who the politics aren't really involved like that. You know what yeah. I mean? Where it's just straightforward, straight to the point, real yeah. blue collar, yeah. you know? And I said, you know, because that's that's what I'm in it for. I'm in I'm in it for, for the work. Just yeah. to go ahead and handle my business. And I found out, you know, you find out it's just, it's not really that way. <laughs> Up to that point, I had been making my living as a recording artist. Yeah, you know what I mean. And there were, the recording opportunities were a lot more plentiful. But after Napster and and the you know the the the, the downloading started, then it moved on to. You know, just pir full piracy and everything was expected to just be free. Yeah. You know, all of the the the, the revenue and the resources went away, and so mm. it got to the point where it was like, wow, I'm gonna have to round this out with some touring. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you know, those opportunities at that point were only for people who had experience in that side. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. I found myself at a at a crossroads of you know where are we going with this, and and uh, yeah. you know, I'm I'm glad to be we we were able to. You know, yeah, <laughs> make it happen. <laughs> you know, yo, what I'm, glad, I'm glad I got to play a part in that, man. Yeah, because you know, I told thing. you at the time, I was just like, yo, why ain't nobody fuck with my man's over here? Like, <laughs> hey, 
<laughs> well, you know, and the other thing was, if you realize, a lot of people didn't really know my resume. Yeah. You know, I, had, I really wasn't doing a great job at that time of telling my story. You know mm. what I'm saying? To be yeah. honest with you, I didn't understand what it meant to get out there and have, you know, your message and your narrative really focused to be able to get people to understand who you are as artists because everybody would say oh yeah I heard Count Basie but what yeah you know what I mean I got Count Basie yeah yeah the name sound familiar and yeah, yeah. but people just didn't have my story I think and I think once I, I focused on I gotta educate these people on who I am what I've done yeah and, and what not and, and you know I, I, it's made a big difference you mm. know what I mean made a huge yeah. difference that's an art in itself when you think about mm. it well yeah you, you know, it's a skill set that you got you got to get <laughs> yeah you know what I mean you've, you've got you've definitely got to wrap your hands around mm -hmm. what your story is in the first place yes. you know and then at that point next how to tell it yeah yeah it's crazy yeah the th the touring thing is like you know it's funny it's like as many people as I've taken on tour I now experience some of the same things that you experience. What do you mean? As far as people that want to take me on tour. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I feel like I feel like I'm the guy who everybody told to go back to school. Okay. And then I went back and got my masters. Right. And then they said, "Go, go back. You go, go back one more time and get, get your, your doctorate." Then you really be killing. I went back and got my right. doctorate, and then I went back and they was like, "Okay, cool, but now you overqualified." <laughs> See, and that's, and, but see, but that's how it is. Yeah. It gets to that point, you know? Yeah. And uh, that's what I realized is that, because it's that way for everybody. Yeah. I mean, no matter what level it is at this point, it's like you, you whatever the, uh, the, the, the business that's, that's saying, hey, I can provide mm -hmm. this to you, you realize with a little bit of grit, yeah. you probably could be doing it yourself there you it know is. what I mean there and then you is. say to yourself like wow it doesn't matter what it is it used to just be in the recording side mm -hmm. but then you say ah I probably could could remain independent do alright then you're just like yep. oh what is that and you each time but yes. it requires a little bit more of that you yes. know what I mean? Yes. And and a lot of times you just you, you get tired. It's like, man, how how much how much more thin am I going to stretch myself? Yeah. yeah. You know? How much more before I can delegate, before I can actually, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh you realize it's not <laughs> that's the gig. <laughs> keep <laughs> keep stretching, like, keep baby. Going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep stretching. Yeah, yeah. You'll have periods where you can kind of expand and bring people in. You right. have like a team, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But then, for the most part, it's just you pushing that thing right. up the hill. Well, if the pe if the people don't respond to give you more resources to continue to build on that team, yeah, then it's a situation of you're gonna continue. To, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. and that's just how it is. You know, the people are doing the best that they can, but. I think, but at the same time, there's only a few people who actually really love the music, period. And what I mean by that is just, they wake up in the morning, the first thing is they think, what am I turning on in here? Yeah. What record am I pulling out? You know, or, or what, what what playlist am I starting? Just playing music, period. Yeah. Well, you know, when we were younger, people used to consume music with a little bit, you know what I mean? Yes. And uh, now it's just to a point where you, they'll share a viral video with you. They'll tell you about a Popeye's chicken sandwich. They'll tell you about <laughs> who got stabbed over, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But they're not sharing any music. Here's a great song I just heard. Listen to this. Wait true. till the bridge come. When was the last time somebody called you on the phone, played something, said, listen, <laughs> listen to this on the phone? No. It just don't happen like that. No, not anymore. You, your inbox is full. And when people hear me talk about the lack of music lovers out there, that's what I'm referring to. Mm. You see what I mean? Yeah. I think people feel like they got to check music out because, you know, a lot of people are talking about it. Yeah. So I got to check it out. Yeah. But they're not really listening to it because they love it. It's you true. You know what I mean? Because they really like, you know what I mean? But they got to check it out because they, yeah. they don't want to miss out. They yeah. you know, when, the, when, the, when they get around that water cooler, they want to have an opinion <laughs> too. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> But it's not something that they just wake up in the morning and say, I got to hear that one more time. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So that's what I'm referring to. And, and I think as a result of that, with so many distractions, it's, you got to just keep pumping out a lot more music. That's the truth. And you put out quite a lot of music. Over the years. That's Over the years. Like back in the days, that was like seen as a bad thing. Well, right. now, now that plays to your strength. Well, see, the thing was for me, Prince, I came in through the major label system. Yeah. And what I learned quickly is one time a and r said to me, you know, we you are here, but you just adding on the catalog. Mm. You see what I mean? He's like, mm. we, we don't make our money off of guy. You know what I mean? Off of the new artists per se. Yeah. It's the catalog that we have. 
And that just continues that we don't have to advertise that. We don't have yeah. to do anything about that. That's just going to play and go just because it's going to sell. Yeah. You know what I mean? The Eagles greatest hits or, you know, yep. it, it's just going to sell when cotton and corn won't. You know what I'm saying? It's just <laughs> yeah. going to happen. So that's what the catalog is what I, I, I came when I got, got into the business and, and I went independent and I found out that, wow, now you can just make, I got a VS1680 and I said, wow, I can just make catalog. Yes. I'm a record, I, I don't have to get a budget to go into the studio. I don't have to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now I can make catalog. It doesn't matter if I can do a proper rollout or not yeah. because it's going to sit there. It's going to sit there and it's going to continue to gen generate some kind of revenue. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Even if it's just a tank of gas <laughs> every month. Well, it's going to you know, generate. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You see what I mean? So what that mean I got to do? I got to make more music. Yeah. You yeah. know, and I think a lot of the guys in Atlanta, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, what they so-called call trap have embraced that. Yes. You know, when they realize that, hey, man, we're not going to use any samples. Mm-hmm. We just gonna get in here. We gonna handle our business, put it out there, and it's it's gonna make money. It's gonna come back, and that's just what they do, you know. And I, you know, a lot of what they those guys do that technique would work for a lot of other artists, but they just ain't got it like that. you know. Yeah. What I mean? They just ain't got it like yeah. that. I see folk out here talking about subscriptions, and you yeah. can buy. Some, you know, you ain't making enough music for no, <laughs> no. subscription. <laughs> no, you know no, what I'm no. Saying? Have you one be, good year of that. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's not gonna just keep <laughs> happening for you like that. And so, you know, it's like you know that 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 that. But you know, as far as me and my musicality, right? Yeah. That's how I came. I came. I, I was. I was raised here in this soil in Ohio. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. Right up in Canton from yeah. seventy eight to eighty seven. Yeah. Okay, we moved to uh, Canton, Ohio, and that's when I was exposed to uh, gospel music in church. But yeah. church is here. Like we I, we came from the Caribbean and in, in Boston, and the gospel music we was getting there. When my father's a preacher was more, you know, calypso based and and uh, you know, guitar based. It wasn't until we I started, you know, dealing with black American, well, I shouldn't say black, but yeah. the skin is dark as mine, that's what I try yeah. to refer to it as, right? Yeah. Uh, people like like-minded people who were Christians, they had an organ in the church, yeah. okay? And that was a level of musicianship that yeah. I wasn't hearing on the radio. Yeah. I wasn't hearing it. I wasn't hearing nowhere around yeah. me. You know what I mean? And I just I just took to it. I was any way I could be involved with that. Yeah. That's what I want to do. It was the only thing that really fascinated me and intrigued me. You know, I just could I'm, I'm yeah. the sound, the harmonies and the core, it was just hitting me. That's you know what shit. I mean? So I went I went full force yeah. into, into well, I'm just you hold chasing on. that. All right. Because I don't want you to I, I, I need to set the people up. Nah, I went full <laughs> force straight, you know, <laughs> Yo, straight up after that. As y'all know, me and Count, you know, we can talk. We can talk. So uh, uh for let y'all know what this is before we go any further. This is the the you know, the cheat code, mm -hmm. the count base D cheat code. And we're gonna talk in this episode about the traits that have made count base d successful okay. and had the longevity that he has had okay you know and one of which is his sense of musicality right and we're going to take a break and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about that mm. for a minute all right take a break we'll be right back all right. what up everybody blueprint here to let you guys know that all three of my books are finally back in stock that means right here what a night this book is back in stock. It's $10. This is a book about the worst shows in my career. That's 10. Word is Blog Volume 1 is back in stock. That's $10. And also, The Making of the Adventures in Counterculture. This book is about my Adventures in Counterculture album. If you have the album, you know the album. You should have a book too. That's $10. All three of these books are back in stock uh, for $10 each. Or you can get all three of them for just $25 right now on waitlist.net. That's all I got today. Uh, thanks for your support. Peace. Yeah, yeah, especially you got good shit being said. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know the bars being wasted. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, we didn't get that. Oh, no. Because we done lost whole episodes behind that Is that shit. right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, where you think it's recording, it's not. We okay. had shit where just that camera go out and just that one go out. Okay. You're like, oh. Damn. Right. You had 40 some blunt shit just came up. <laughs> That's how it is. It's really like that. It's really like that. Like, I don't know. I'm going to get you a killer right. tape. <laughs> get you, buy you four more killer tapes, son. 
<laughs> so yeah, the, the cheat code, man. We back here. Yes. Count base D blueprint mm-hmm. live from uh, you know, the Super Duty Studios. Right. That's you know what I'm saying? It's a beautiful facility. You know, you know what I mean? And uh, you know, we want to talk about the first trait uh that I've seen that kind of separates you from pretty much all of your peers. You know, mm-hmm. you are self-proclaimed but it's actually true that you know the rap with the most chords with the most chords <laughs> i can't say i'm the i'm the man with the most chords you know what i mean but that's i thought that that summed it up for me was is like musically yeah we're not gonna have we're not gonna argue balls and strikes no no no, no no you know no, what i'm saying you got the most chords. You know, it's just like musically <laughs> you know what i mean we could talk about who the best producer on the mic or yeah, yeah, what have yeah. you but the musicality that I put into this, into this, because yeah. I started there, but yeah. I was ignoring the hip hop side. That was just mm. something that I did outside. Yeah, you know what I mean. But when I was inside, I was practicing piano. I yeah. come outside with my friends. I was, in, you know, from Canton, and you know, we listening to Run DMC on the cassettes. You know what yeah. I mean? We 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 beatboxing, listening to Fat Boys. You know what I mean? We 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 just kicking it you know we 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 falling in love with this with this rap thing yeah that's coming from new york but i'm, I'm i've got a whole nother gospel musical side to me on the inside on sundays i'm mm-hmm. going to church and whatnot this is this is from five six nine years old you yeah. know what i mean so it wasn't until later that uh until and to be honest with you when i heard uh uh, the interludes on the main source album, Mad Science is the Sir Scratch and K cut. Yeah. And I heard the gling, kaboom, gling. I yeah. said, oh, oh, so they're starting <laughs> to bring some of that in. Oh, okay. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. We going there? Because yeah. I'm already there. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But I didn't think that it, it those worlds were separate still. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, okay. So it's about 89, 90. Mm-hmm. The first time I'm hearing. And then, the next time was the uh, Far Side album, the um, you know Jay Swift and them, the yep. interludes to for better or for yep, worse, and on yep. the, I said, Quentin's oh, on his okay, way. Right? And oh, all this dear. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay, so I'm thinking to myself, you know, maybe my second, third album, if I when I get signed, yeah, I'll introduce my musicality because you know at the same time this was still pre roots right pre- so you wasn't allowed really you could right. do a little interlude or something but you wasn't really just no, gonna no, no. be able to just you see what i'm saying yeah so here, here here we go i'm moving at this pace and saying to myself two three albums down the line i'd like to explore some of that mm-hmm. meld the worlds together well man by the time i ended up moving to nashville after i you know i went i left here ohio went to pennsylvania to go to boarding school mm-hmm music you know what i mean mainly leave there still you know getting red alert tapes from my new york friends you yeah. know who, who i'm going to high school with and stuff i'm still listening to benita apple bum and all i'm hearing about wow you know fender rose i'm hearing terms i'm here here i am knee deep now yeah in music theory I, i'm the left church i'm away at boarding school i'm learning music theory and and singing classically in austria and all of this other type of stuff with my high school and this rap thing is still going on. So it wasn't until Young MC mm-hmm. and uh, Tone Loke came out until rap became came out to where I was going to boarding school. Yeah. And I would say in the heartland of America, those are the two songs that took rap to the heartland. Besides yeah. maybe Walk This Way, but that was still considered a yeah. fluke. But from after that delicious vinyl invasion, it was it was gone forever yeah. in the heartland. That's what I, I I was there. Yeah, you know what I mean. Nineteen ninety, I was sixteen, about to be seventeen. I was in high school, so don't try to tell me nobody. Yeah, you know I was there. Okay, <laughs> and uh, after them two songs came out, yeah. that's when I said, "Oh snap!" Yeah, this rap thing got some yeah. legs. So here I am, musically saying to myself, "What am I going to do? Am I going to just go straight music route?" Mm. Or am I going to try to do this rap route that I'm doing over here? Because now this rap route got legs. You can actually be, yeah. up to that point, you couldn't be, if you weren't signed, you could not be just a, a, a at-home rapper. A, yeah, a, 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 that's a, a fact. A lounge rapper that just, you know, yeah. plays bars. and You couldn't do that. Yeah. So at that point, you were signed to nothing. Well, you know, at this point, my mind is still, I got to get signed. I, I, I moved to Nashville. You know, the story goes, my, my, my family moved to Tampa. I get down there uh, for the summer breaks 
And uh, my bro- it's 1990 now. My brother asked me, what would you want for your birthday this year? I said, I want studio time. That's all I want, <laughs> man. It's just an hour of studio time. Yeah. And uh, so he gives me an hour of studio time at a, at a random studio in mm-hmm. Tampa, Florida. Okay. We get down there. And uh, you remember, I, at this point, I don't know how to program nothing. I don't know how to, I, you yeah. know, I, I've got start buying records that year, 1990. Yeah. But I didn't have, you know, any type of sampler. I didn't really even know how a sampler worked back yeah. then. That the information just was not. That's how it, it was wasn't back com- then. Yeah, it wasn't common it was, like no, that. No. One person in a city. Yeah, have might a have a sampler. Maybe and everybody would have to go either through <laughs> that person. Yeah. Yep. Or you just wasn't making no music. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Well, at this time, I get there, and there's a guy who was who was the resident sampler guy. You uh-huh. know what I mean? For the school. I mean, for the for the city, basically, of Tampa. <laughs> he also had a radio show, and uh, there was an engineer there. And the guy turned out to be a, by, a man by the name of Kenny K. Mm-hmm. And Kenny K was a, was a satellite member of Digital Underground. Unbeknownst to me, Digital Underground... Greg Jacobs, Shock G, was from Tampa. Oh, wow. And had recorded some of the Digital Underground album at this same studio, Freaks and Industry. So oh. I'm sitting here, I asked the man, you know, do you know anything about rap? You know, when back then you used to have to yeah. ask the studios, and like, you don't even have done any rap before. He was like, as a matter of fact, he pulled out the two inch reels, the Freaks <laughs> of the Industry. Wow. L- Two inch reels now and play, and I hadn't even heard it yet. The first Mm. time I heard Freaks of the Industry was that time. Wow, was in that studio, right? It's like the end of August 1990. So at that point, I was like, "Yo, we can do this." You know, (laughs) so I had a couple records because Shock G and you do share a lot in common. No man, which is you don't even understand. It's it's creepy. Yeah, people don't know. (laughs) First of all, I was born ten years to the day. Mm. Oh, Shock G. We have the same birthday 10 years to the day. Wow. My parents lived in Tampa at that time. I was coming home to Tampa, Florida. Mm-hmm. Uh, the chords and everything like that. You know what I mean? It, it keeps going, and I'm the, not going to sit up here and funk. try to get Yeah, I'm not going to try to get <laughs> ethereal with it, but yeah. me, I, me, I got a real thing. You know, Shock G really fathered my style. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As yep. far as putting chords on top of samples. That's mm-hmm. him. And I came in with just with a similar background and heard what he did. When I heard I Get Around for the first time, you know, just a few years later it was like, Psh, yeah. Man. You know what I mean? It brought more, even when I think about that song sometimes it just definitely to me as far as production wise you know, my jaw starts shaking because it's, <laughs> it's 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 one for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's when I learned about you know the samples got to be in the key. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The co- you got to tune the chords to the sen- and it was just my it just all made sense. Like wow, yeah. that's how you put musicality in this thing. You know what I mean? Mm. And uh, so it it was really the origins of my style. People listen to me, listen to my music and say, you know, oh, man, I can hear the chords, I can hear the church, I can hear that. But it really, it, you know, if it's either it's where my homies, you know, the, the, yeah. the creep with me song yep. with uh, ill out scratch. When I heard that the first time, yeah. I was signed, you know, at this mm-hmm. point. And uh, and I but I I hadn't uh, started programming yet using samples and whatnot. I have records, but again, I was just a musician. The guy who I was making music with, uh, who helped me get signed, you know, when it came time to start doing the album, he wasn't available, Mm. which meant I had to do my first album, raw instruments, top to bottom. I didn't know nothing about looping myself up, saying, I just go in there, play drums, you know what I mean? Grab the bass, play bass. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Sit at the, the 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 roads, play roads. Go to the piano, play piano, and then do a vocal next to him. Well, I, so I would program an 808 first to use as my click track. Yeah, and that's how I did pre life crisis the whole thing. Wow. And then I had a couple people come in and do overdubs. Mark Nash on guitar. Yeah. Uh, Rob McGaha on uh, fugal horn and trumpet, and uh, uh, rock rock. Um, Rock was his name, but he he played like some flute on on some stuff and and things yeah. and, and 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 DJ Reggie Reg did a couple cuts for me and you know that was it that was the album. This was nineteen ninety. It was ninety four. Ninety four. Ninety four is when yeah. I is when I did that. Is when I is, it was from January ninety four till March. Okay. I mixed it that March, turned it in July, 
They started doing press for the album. Yeah. Uh, and they kept and they wanted to drop me because you yeah. know it's like what the hell is this? This don't sound nothing like the demo you did with, with your man. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I I said well. You know, he not, they like, well, this don't sound, you know, like yeah. no hip hop. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, this don't sound, you know, like, wait. Yeah, it's a little too musical. Right, you kind of did the bait and switch. I, I had to, I used to have braids and my hair would be all crazy and whatnot because yeah. I really couldn't afford a haircut. Yeah. So that's how I was rocking. Well, after I got the sign of my deal and whatnot, man, I started rocking waves, you know, getting fades and all that. Like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? You know as soon as you signed the paperwork, you yeah, went to switch your room. Went straight to you know what I mean. I got me some gear, Tommy Hill, but you know what I mean. I'm I'm, I'm doing. You it. had to whip. Ah, oh, you know what I mean. Well, I just got a little grand damn right. Yeah, you know, little, I ain't go crazy. Yeah, yeah. I just got me a little. You know, back then that, that was nothing. that was classic back yeah, then. Ninety four was, was right there with the maximum. You know what I mean. It was a ninety four. Yeah, so, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing was, it was like they still looked at me like, yo, man. You know, this ain't this ain't it. You know, and the source yeah. said that I had some of the best. I got three mics in the source. They said mm -hmm. you have some of the best hip hop jazz to date. So mm -hmm. they were calling me at that time. Yeah. The best, you know, because it was Greg Osby and us three. And, yeah. You know, what I mean, at this yeah. time, Diggable Planets. Planets was going on the road with, with live instruments. And, you know, yep. what I mean, so it was like, yo, he's yep. right up in there. And of course, that by the roots got signed November 93. I got signed December 93. Mm. And so, but, you know, I got a song on my new album called One Man Roots because that's how I felt this this whole time because it was like I had to be all all six, seven of them do You know what I mean? They, you know, that sounded yeah. like the roots. It's like, yeah, but yeah. it's just me. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Like, yo, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, I remember getting a copy of your record. I can't remember if I told you, but I was doing college radio back then. Oh, okay, gotcha. We got a copy of your Is record back option, then. man? You know, they were sending it around. Yeah, yeah, we had it. Uh, we played. I feel like we played it. Really? And I remember... CMJ okay. wrote about it at the time. Uh -huh. I didn't know anything about you. Just like, oh, uh -huh. I remember. So I always remember that. Like, this is one of the, because we didn't have a lot of hip hop up there. Okay, gotcha. I was like the only hip hop guy. Okay, gotcha. So when we got a hip hop record. So that's how I mean. Like, that's how it was across the board. <laughs> yeah. And hip hop wasn't like that all around. Mm mm. Mm mm. Oh, that's crazy. But yeah, man, I mean, the, but what happened during that time from July 94 to when the record actually came out, which was September 95. Mm -hmm. During that whole time, there was a guy named Miguel Baguer who was the publicist at that time. And man, he, I don't know what he did, but he talked to a few people and sent my record out. There was a guy named Johnny Coppola who made like this etching uh, 12 inch and sent it to some college radio yeah. and radio. And this guy, Miguel Baguer, and man, my first piece of press was a new and noteworthy in Billboard, wow. put it that way. And it just went from there. Spin mm. magazine. Spin flew me up to like to come there and just do. I'm wearing a white Fred Perry in the picture. You know what I mean? I'm kicking it. I'm 20 years old, 20, 21 years old. Yeah. Um, I mean, you name the magazine, man. You name it. I was in every one of them. I was in my and vibe with Michael Jackson on the cover. Yeah. I was in I was in spin three months in a row. Wow. You know what I mean? I could name the covers because my sister was, you know, I'd be like, yo, I'm going to be in such and such this month. She'd be like, okay. And she'd go get, you know, this is yeah. when people was reading magazines. Yeah, you know, yeah. people would stand. If y'all don't know, people used to stand in in, in drugstores yeah. and stand in the, in the aisle. And read. And just read. Yep. Your mama would go shopping and you would yep. just go straight there, pick up right on. Yep. People was reading these magazines. You know what I'm saying? So the next thing you know, it was just. It was just picking up and then they couldn't drop me at that point because yeah. the press, but what they was doing was shuffling me from label to label. So I was on chaos Sony at one point okay. I was on, I came through Pete nice is the one who signed me Pete nice from third base. Yeah. And, uh, I came through his record label, Hoppo, which had Curious George and, you know what I mean, yeah. Hard to Obtain, where he was also working with. But this is how my whole Doom affiliation got started. Yeah. And so during this time, you know, it, it was like they would shuffle me to the work group and they, you know, that's who eventually put it out. But any little uh, offshoot, but it was Sony Music, but they would just shuffle mm. you around. Because they didn't know what to do with you. you well, like? it was, I think it was like if they needed like a little bit of critical cred on the label to round it out they would just yeah. you know what i mean because i was we'll I, throw our artsy guy I over was, here i was the artsy <laughs> darling man from the, at that time man you couldn't pick up one of the magazines and i see me going you know what i mean oh here he is yeah, you know yeah. what i mean and so that was yeah. my that was my thing and it was like wow man like this is 
it was it was odd because I started realizing like, yo, they expect a hit record. Yeah. They want yeah. a hit record. They don't want no artsy, you know, your, your little reviews is cool count. Yeah. That's fly, but man, we yeah. need a hit record. You know yeah. what I mean? And uh, I wasn't focused on a hit record. I was mm. focused on trying to uh, make, because see, I still had artistic insecurity print. Mm. You see what I mean? I was still trying to prove to people that I was really talented. Instead you know of just writing hits. What, well, that, well, I, well, or, or my, writing great songs. Whatever, whatever it was, I still yeah. was trying to show like, yo, he's talented. Mm. I still needed that. Mm. You know, like when we, you, get, you get in your inbox with somebody says, hey, Count, would you uh, listen to one of my beats and review it and tell me what you think? Yeah. Or just, just just check me out on such and such. I just want to get you a good eye. I was still in that mode. Yeah. I yeah. was still in that mode, man. Mm, you I'm, were signed. And I'm signed. Yeah. But I'm young, though. I'm 20, 21. Yeah. So I don't really, I ain't started, ha you know what I mean? I yeah. ain't got that yeah. yet. You know what I mean? I ain't got that yet because I, I haven't fought no wars musically. You see what I mean? Mm. And it wasn't until later that's when I started getting that side of me is where I had to develop as an artist. And I, I got that when once that deal with Sony was done, February 96, it was then time for me to start independently. Yeah. But I was finished. I went and got a job as a dry cleaner. It's crazy. Yeah, I went and got a job as you a dry cleaner. Like, Six dollars an hour. I said, that's it. Yeah, so I don't need to do this. Yeah. You know what I mean? I did what I came to do, which was get signed before I was 22 because I dropped out of college. Yeah. And I said, if I don't have a record deal, by the time these folks is out of school, I'm a failure. <laughs> I mean, that's some real shit that to say. That was it. That was it for me. That was it. I said, if I don't have a record deal by the time I'm 22, I'm a failure because these folks is leaving school. Yeah. And I need to be where I'm at. Uh, in my field Boom. when they're where they're at in theirs. Boom. I said, yes. that's the time. That's the bracket time right there. Yep. If I don't do this at that time, I'm done. I'm a failure. Hmm. Crazy. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that's that was my attitude. Mm. I, I, yeah, I dropped out of school, but I would st I was stopping at absolutely nothing to make sure yeah. that that date was going to be met with me with a major record deal. I wasn't, I, you know, there was no independent game yet. No, 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 no. There in was fact, no independent game yet. No, no, there was no means right, to I was even still, manufacture. I was still in the in the golden era. Yeah, you know what I mean. I was still right there in the golden era. So, mm. you know, this is how it was back then. You Crazy. know, yeah, it was wild. Yeah, when when you think about those studios back then, I was talking to somebody about this the other day. How like you could have a they don't understand because now it's just you, the studio and production. It's all wrapped into one, right? But back then, you would have a musical idea. Mm -hmm. You might make record it to tape, right? So you could have it, right? Then you would go to the studio <laughs> and try to use a bunch of gear that you had never seen before. Right. That even the people who worked there didn't know how to right. use. And to make a legit song. Yeah. Like, it's not like it is now. No, nah, you nah, know, not at all. So I think a lot of people don't understand that about that era. Like, not yeah, at all. just because you're signed and you're an amazing musician. Right. Doesn't mean that you'll make an amazing record. Because well, there were so many things to learn about production in between exactly. your musicality and. One thousand percent. Yeah. And nobody was trying to help. No, no, no. You know what I mean? That's your job as a producer. I knew I wanted to produce my own record, but I remember the first day print. I had a. a, a a, a engineer, a head engineer, and a second engineer. And I remember we sitting around here chatting just like this. Mm. Been sitting there about 45 minutes. I'm waiting for somebody to tell me what to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and they looking at me like, I'm on the clock. Yeah, you I didn't think regardless. Yeah, it don't matter. You, you know, so I'm thinking like, damn, well, I guess we, wow. Okay, well, shit, you know. <laughs> Yeah, hook the drums up. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they're looking at me. I'm just having to realize that I'm having to figure out what mic goes where. This is all my job. Mm. You know what I mean? As a producer, this is my job. I got to select what mics is going what and what. You know, and they're looking at me like, oh, okay. So, you, you, oh, so you're not really a producer, huh, Dwight? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, man, Mike Corbett, Joe Costa, they yeah. kind of guided me through the process and just was, you know, looking at me like, okay, well, normally at this time, they would tell us to go to do and do this. So I'd yeah. be like, oh, okay. And then by like the second or third song, I started to get the rhythm. Like, okay. And yeah. they kind of knew exactly what I was going to be doing, how I was going to be doing it. And that's how I was putting in them 16-hour days, just, you know what I mean? Yeah. Vocals, let's go, boom, boom. And and, and we we knocked out pre-life crisis. And so I, I'm at the dry cleaner. 
and I'm there and whatnot, and vacation time is coming up, and my manager, who was my manager while I was doing this now, he he's parlayed the people who he meeting yeah. and the stuff he's doing, man. He got my boys and stuff. Everybody got record deals, and he got a little wow. indie rock label going. And he was working at a laundry I'm working at a laundry mat. But he, wow. you know, that's how this business go. You know what I mean? He was like, yo, you know, I met this dude. And, you know, all my all my homeboys, you know, who I went to the college with and stuff, they all got deals. And, you know what I mean? And he was like, yo, man, you don't need to be out here no dry cleaner or whatnot. He, a few rat, he threw, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. A few five figures my way and was like, just, just turning an album, you know, anything. You know, at that mm. point, I was like, dang, this is, this is more money than I'd have made. The entire year, the dry cleaner. So it's like, yeah. psh, gotta, you know, <laughs> holler, you know what I mean? Sorry, two, two weeks like, gotta go. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> Bounce made R for sale. Mm. And then, um, you know, then at that point, it, I was like, yo, you know, but, uh, you know, I, I was going through a lot of personal problems yeah. and stuff like that then. So then it goes into the, the Doom era and whatnot. So I'll give you an opportunity, yeah. to, you know, because I'm so, kind of so, rambling a little bit. No, nah, no, nah, but so that it makes a lot of sense because when you're talking about that art for sale era, mm -hmm. I, uh, the first line that pops into my head is, you know, my record label right. is jerking, jerking me. Right. And then, you, you know, know what I mean? in ways that I can't see, right? Right, right, right. And it makes sense that that was the first thing you made after getting dropped right. you know, and that's... working in a damn dry cleaner. Right, right. Because something don't add up. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> you know, what's right. honest with you, man, I had some, again, you know, relationships and stuff like that and it wasn't really working out for the like I thought it was yeah. and I had this fascination with the with the year 1997 at the time and you know my I had my first I had my daughter then mm -hmm. and uh it was like just so much was going on but man I was just really you know Arthur Sale was was really my checkout record man, I really thought yeah. it was gonna be my last record because I thought I was really gonna mm. take myself out you talking about like mental health and all of that you yeah. know what I mean? back then we weren't we weren't talking about it like that but <laughs> I wasn't really, you know what I mean? I knew I signed up for something was like, ah, uh, you know, yeah. like this, this ain't, yeah. nah, you know? And uh, after a while, I was like, yo, you got to put, <laughs> you know what I mean? After it was done, it was like, yo, but I, I got it out on the record, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And it was like, yo, but I'm talking about the end of the world and yes. all kind of, cr you know what I mean? I'm yeah. just, I'm art for sale. I'm like, I'm going to put it all out there. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you didn't even really rap on the record. Not really. I mean, I well, feel you know, like it's, it's like, a couple little twelve bar joints in there. Yeah, but I was, I was, you know, again. It, yeah, you was doing what you felt like. Well, you know, like, I had really just started program. I started program about ninety six or yeah. so. I had bought a bunch of equipment, but it 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 was it sat there. Yeah. I didn't really start using um, that stuff until like ninety six. I ran into um, Vic and Juju from Beat Nuts. Mm -hmm. They were doing a track for a guy named Me Fi Me, who I knew. I remember his, that. I knew his his uh, manager, Chris Cuban Tatum, and uh, he at his studio, whatnot. And I learned so much, you know, dealing with that man and, and his facilities. But the Beat Nuts were there specifically at this time, and I remember Vic put a whole track together on an MPC sixty, right? And he it took him six hours, mm -hmm. and you know, Juju was playing pool. You know, they had been there for days, and so they would kind of take turns. But I happened to be there when Vic was making his beat. And I remember I saw him make a beat from the record mm. to the drum machine into the board. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Six hours. I sat there. I sat yeah. there, man. I mean, that's like college for a well, beat that's maker, what though. it was. It was the master class. Yeah, because I never had that. I, it, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I never had that. It was the master class. He didn't say, well, you know, I'll, I'll be done in a minute. Just As long as I sat there and I didn't say a damn word. I ain't say. Mm. And he would, sometimes he would just turn on and be like, yo, that snare sound off to you? It's like, you know what I mean? Like that kick, you know, just like every, maybe like hour yeah you know what i mean or so he might just say one thing but that's it he might stand up stand back listen to it i wasn't saying a damn word mm. excuse my french <laughs> but i wasn't saying <laughs> nothing you know what i mean yeah. i just was just sitting there just so he didn't say i mean you, you got you got bounce <laughs> I'm like I feeling. need this yeah, you I know what I mean this. so I just sat there and i could see his hands i could see everything and i could see the process and mm. ever since that's similar to the way that I learned how I programmed. I went from yeah. that and started programming in that way. So when people mm -hmm. are like, oh, you know, when I say beat nuts and whatnot, it's really, I'm just talking about that encounter. It's about not missing a single moment. Yeah. 
when that opportunity for you to learn something special like that come about. A lot of people, I'm sitting here trying to give them game or do something. They want to keep talking and asking. Just be quiet, man. It's going to come to you. I'm going to say what you want me to say. I might get to it. But hush. You know what I'm saying? Just, just sit right there and listen to what I'm saying. Or watch what I'm doing and try to just digest it. And you might grasp. You know what I mean? And, and that's what I did that day, man. And it gave me a skill that I use even up to this week. You know what I mean? What, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> to this very week from 96. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? 23, 24, some years, you know, uh, uh, still. Yeah. I, you, if you listen, that's where you hear that beat and swing in, in, in how I make my beats. I went, I started using an MPC 60 <laughs> with the gray maxi pad at the bottom you know what i'm saying not the two yeah the 60 you know what i mean yeah. and so uh you know the props then that's why eventually you know but the mighty v vic mm. from ghetto pros and that was where i got my specific you know programming tool there's a lot of other people yeah. who, but that was the moment where mm. it clicked and i and i and i felt like oh okay all right. You could see it. I could see it. I could yeah. feel it. The whole style, I could hear it. I could hear it already. Well, I'd hear a sample now and be like, I know just what I want to do mm. with that. You know yeah. what I mean? The, the, uh, you hear you when, when you're playing records and uh, I know. <laughs> you, hear it, like, oh. you know, you walk over there and say, uh, <laughs> who often to kill this? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I know that feeling. That feeling. You make that face like, right. mm, and then you, but y'all hear that? Right. <laughs> but you got to be a music lover. You got to yeah. keep that music coming around you yeah. to have them moments. It's true. You know what it's I mean? It's true. Did you, so, so you got dropped in a lot of ways because you were making something that in a lot of ways was kind of ahead of its time. I would say. And yeah. they couldn't find a market for it. I would say, yeah, I would say history yeah. says yeah. that. Not just my mouth, but history is saying yeah. that. Yeah. Did that ever make you discouraged about infusing the musicality into what you make? See, that's the thing for me, man. I ain't got, I don't, I, don't, I ain't got no business yeah. worrying about you, at what that they point you were like. like. I'm just I mean, yeah, it, never in my, in my career have I worried about what the folk gonna like. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Honestly, because that's me. I've always just tried to reach my f full potential. Now, if the audience can deal with it, fine. But if not, they're going to have to wait because, man, art for sale. I couldn't sell them records for like five dollars. You know what I mean? After I had got a box, you know, there was certain times I was trying to sell them off for like five dollars, nothing. And the mm. next thing I know, man, one time, like about two thousand, about three, four years later, you know, I had to run in with like Peanut Butter Wolf, and he was like, "Yo, man, that record there, like, like, yo, you know what I mean? Like, yo, what was up with that? He's like, did you really play? You like those those instruments? Yeah. I said, yeah, you, like, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? That's me." And he's like, yo, man, like you should sing more, you know, I'm like this right here, this is your lane right here. Like, you know, I was like, yeah. I wasn't even thinking about this kind of stuff for my label until, you know, but this right here? And I was like, word? Like, it was like, yeah. shit. It was like well, don't nobody else really, you know, <laughs> we get it like that. And he was like, nah, man. But, and uh, it kept moving on and on. Next thing I know, I want to say like, he just dropped a bomb. Cause next thing I know, everybody was just coming at me like, yo, art for sale. I'm like, word? Hmm. You know, and it was a real slow, slow, yeah. slow burn. But, you know, and, you know, it was just something crazy. Me and Matt, Matt Mahaffey, you know, he basically was a, you know, big part of the, the production. You know what I mean? Yeah. Up on that record. You know what I mean? Another guy who then helped me out, learn about gear and, you know, all of that. Because he was just knee deep. This guy named Matt Mahaffey from a band called Self. And okay. he was, you know, he was one of my homeboys. Who, He's in Nashville? He Nashville cat. He went out to L.A., made his bones, did the Expedia.com jingle, did the <laughs> Shrek. You know what I mean? Did all kinds of movies and whatnot. You know what I mean? Just yeah. did the damn thing. Not, yeah. not on no small, not no, no kind no, 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 no. of hello, fishing. goodbye, all kind of just <laughs> boom. You know, that's how I did the vitamin C song and all hmm. that. I was just, you know, Matt was just, you know what I mean? <laughs> Guitars for Beck. I mean, real, yeah. you know what I mean? And so I, I've always had them kind of friends in this business. So it's like yeah. I see them and I see what they're doing. It's like it's never made me feel like I got to chase nothing. 
Because yeah. I'm I'm living that life through my peoples. You know, it might come through, yeah. you know, with such and such. And next thing you know, people see me, I'm all backstage. And when I'm like, yo, how are you? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. yo, I know. You know I mean, man? every few years you bust out with a moment like that. Well, I mean, well, now, well now, 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 here, no, now, here lately, <laughs> here lately, that ain't nothing. That's all coming through Dame Funk, to be honest with you. Yeah. That's just Dame. He throwing me live passes. <laughs> you know, he, he, yeah, he retweets something. And next thing you know, somebody else come in. Doom. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's Dame again. Boom, boom, I'm coming yeah. down court. Dame be like, Phew. yeah. Well, he retweet something, and then here comes somebody yeah. with a gorilla. You well, know? Shit, I remember you calling me. Uh, it was probably two two years ago. It was at like twelve thirty at night. He was like, Brent, Brent, I gotta tell you something, man. Uh, <laughs> me and Snoop. <laughs> Like, well, yeah, you know yeah. what? You was one of the first people yeah. I called because yeah. I remember it was like. It's, you know what right I felt like? You know what it felt like? It felt like I was driving behind an armored truck and a bag <laughs> fell out. <laughs> you know what I'm mean? saying? I pulled over, so I'm like, print. <laughs> Yo. Yo. <laughs> This bag just <laughs> fell out the back of this truck, man. Like, I need some guidance, bro. What, you know what I mean? I'm like, you know, there's one person I know who's going to be able to magnify this moment. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I yeah. said, I need to call Print. Print. I was like, yo, this shit was dope, dog. Yo. Yeah, man. <laughs> Am I right around yeah, that? You were. You were just like, I need some game woo. right now. Yeah. yeah. I, I need How can some, I maximize see, this? That's the thing, is because it's only certain people I can call like that. <laughs> yeah. You feel what I'm saying, Prince? Yeah, it's, it's true. It's only a few people like that I can call. Yeah. Can't nobody really teach me nothing in this music business no more. It's only a couple people. And I'm a call. I'm sitting <laughs> across the, from one of them right now. That's the real shit. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You sit here every week sharing game after game after game after jewel after knowledge and all that. It should be about 10 million millionaires out here. It's true. You know what they lack in no print? What? Them three things that you got. You feel what I'm saying? Accountability, discipline, mm -hmm. and impulse control. You can read all the self-help books you want. You can get all, you can watch all the podcasts. You can do all of that. But that's what they that's what they teaching you what to do once you done got up off the couch. Mm -hmm. Once you done turned the Xbox off. You feel what I'm saying? Once you done shut Netflix down. That's what they're telling you what to do. But what they can't teach you is how to get up off the couch. They can't teach you how to how to turn off the Xbox. So you sit here and then all they do is they sit here and ask you questions. Watch and do all of this and whatnot. And then what happened? They ain't got no accountability. They don't have no discipline. And you mm. can't teach them that. Yet and still they want to come here and ask you all these questions. And it's like, listen, man, I can't give you this passion this vision and that hard work. I can't give it to you, man. Somehow that got to be divinely endowed on you. That's what you got. These rappers don't operate like you. They don't do how you do. I done seen it. You see what I'm saying? I done seen it. So you sit here and you you try to be benevolent and share. You feel what I'm saying? But wait, how you gonna give them that accountability? How you gonna give them the discipline? How you gonna give them that impulse control print? You can't. I done tried, man, till I'm blue in the face because I don't wanna feel like a jerk. I wanna share. Cause I know when I was coming up, I wish that somebody would share with me. You feel what I'm saying? So bad. I wanted somebody just to share and be like, yeah. I tell you just how to do it. All I ask is if you blow it up, look back if you can. If an opportunity come by where you can, you know, look out for me, bless me but i'm not asking you for nothing i ain't saying nothing mm. but if some of my game done blessed you bless me to the game when you mm. when you blow up what i done gave you right but man it don't matter these folk want to sit right there and say oh well, you know man and give you excuses yep. give you reasons because it's a thin line between the reason and excuse yep. you feel what i'm saying they want to give you reasons they want to give you excuses they want to give you causes you feel what I'm saying? Instead of just getting it done. And if, if my whole career, man, that's just the whole thing for me, man. I, I ain't worried about what nobody got to say, how they feel. Because I know they can't even they can't even understand what I'm doing anyway. You feel what I'm saying? The yeah. skill set as far as between the music and the rap. I'm talking about authentic hip hop, not just 
You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm going bang on. You know, I'm talking about the the, the, the original way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You you came up from. I don't care if you saw the break dancers at the '84 Olympics and said, "Mom, you know, I want a tracksuit like that." You know, I wanted some shell toe Adidas with run. I don't care what your moment was in the heartland of America. It's other people who grew up in the Bronx and grew up in L.A. But for us in the middle, it was a moment we saw on TV. I don't care if it was Star Wars on PBS or what it was, but something said, Mama, that right there speaks to me. When we, next time we in Woolworth, pick up that Subway art uh, book for me. Mm-hmm. Or I, want, I, I saw Phase 2 in Woolworth. I don't know what this is, but I just I just want the Roxy 12 inch. You know, this is how it was back then. You know, that's the original way. You see the graffiti on the wall and you just like, wow, wow. You know what I mean? All of us who were born in that early 70s time period were like that. That's 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 our that's our gift. Yeah. You know, as as we as I got older and what I realized about musicality and hip hop was this. It's got to be in the in the context of hip hop for it to have significance. OK, once I start my first time I went out of this country as Count Base D, I was opening up for Branford Marcellus. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Buckshot LaFunk. Mm-hmm. I saw a level of, of musicality. You know what I mean? And I said to myself, OK, I see what he's doing as far as combining the jazz and the hip hop. And the, you know what I mean? And all of it. That's I met DJ Apollo. From 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 uh, from ISP and and it was just like ah wow you know like wow I see it I see it, but Branford was just a little bit removed from from the original yes. you know the hip hop that hip-hop we guy. was you know what I'm saying but he appreciated it yes he had yes. full appreciation but I said to myself that's but that's why he called Premier mm-hmm. that's why he called these people. You see what I'm saying? So I said to myself, okay, see, so later on, I worked with Victor Wooten. I was on two of his records. You know, he ain't want me to come up in there and play no bass. Mm-hmm. He want me to come up in there and do this this hip hop thing. Yeah. I'm like, mm. I'm like every time with somebody calling me, they want me to bring my, my hip hop to the table, but they know they'll be able to communicate with me on a musical level. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So at that point, I said to myself, okay, I'm only a good musician you know, as far as it's in the hip hop context. Once I step myself out the hip hop context, especially this is apparent when I go to church. There's a woman in Columbus named Trina Treen playing and singing this, you know, probably in Ohio right now. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I walk in that church right there. I ain't going near <laughs> that corner where the musicians play. Yeah. She got a brother too. I think his name is like Donnie J. Then I, I'm not going in that corner, mm-hmm. you know, except to stand over there and just look, <laughs> see where their fingers going, come back and be like, <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. Because that's what that is. Now, when yeah. it comes time, I, I ask them, you know, y'all got any record stores around? You got any breaks? You know what I'm saying? We can. That's that's just that's way out for them. Yeah. They ain't going to be able to chop no breaks. Mm-mm. You feel what I'm saying? They don't even know what a break is. So as as time has built, I've seen that, yo, but that's it, though. Dylan and the yeah. Smithsonian. So it's like yeah. that part of it is key. Yeah. That's what they're going to remember my era for. Not for my ability to play no instruments. That stuff is nice on top of it. Yeah. But it's it's the musicality that do you feel kind of oh, see what I'm trying exactly to say? I feel exactly what you see. So it's like I see people now. It's like yo, you know, I'm 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 moving up into, you know, I'm I'm I don't use no samples or I I I, I stopped doing that. You know, what I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, that's cool. But you gotta realize I've been playing music and hip hop like this since '94, since '95. Yeah. So you want some advice? I'm your guy. <laughs> you feel what I'm right, saying? Right, I'm right. gonna tell you how to maintain because it wasn't until I started messing with doing what people saw put the put the word hip hop with me, period. Yeah. Yeah. They call me jazz hop, acid jazz, trip hop, all of that. I'm sitting here <laughs> like, man, come on, man. <laughs> That's when it came when I said, I got to make a record to let these people know that I'm not playing. Yeah. I'm not playing. I'm not out here, you know, shucking and jiving saying, yeah. I'm hip hop. But I'm really like a, a Berkeley College of Music student or Juilliard student, Northeastern student. Mm-hmm. And I'm really just kind of just doing this because it's hot right now. Yeah. So that's when I made Dwight Spitz. And yeah. I said, after this record, that's the first time and the only time yeah. I've ever made a record that I said, I'm going to make sure that these people understand that I'm not playing. Yeah. I'm not playing. 
You feel what I mean? Well, in the middle of this record, I rekindled with Doom. Yeah. <laughs> Lose half the files. And so it was like, now nah, the record was really about to turn up. You know what I mean? Because that was a master class that just, you know, knocked me on my ass. You yeah. know what I mean? So like, you know, that was the next master class I had that just 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 turn my whole world upside down. I ain't never been the same. Yeah. Never been the same since the night I came to his crib the first time. Never been the same. Mm. Never. Never been the same. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> how how did how did Doom hear of you? Well, again, we had uh, Pete Nice had signed me to a record deal. Yeah. He was managing KMD. Yeah. So and Bobito was kind of the glue between both and the, and the, and and everything, the radio right? Show. Yeah. And so I just think my name was kind of swirling around in those circles, you know, as this that's the musical guy. So here come later on, I start getting contacted on behalf of Doom to do some work for you know to do some work for Doom. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna just leave it there. All right. And in exchange for doing some work for Doom, it was like Doom would do, you know, like some work, some work for, for you. you. Yeah. And I was like, well, you know, at this time, I hadn't really heard Operation Doomsday. I wasn't really on the whole uh, underground. Everything yeah. just sounded, you know, oh, man, that's, I would say, oh, man, that's just that dust shit. It just sound too dusty. You know, I'd be like, oh, yeah. I, I can't really, pardon my French, but I'd be like, yo, I can't really, you know what I mean? Yeah. It just sound like, and then people come on and raw, raw. I was like, yo, underground and independent hip hop had gotten real. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't funky. Yes. You feel what I'm saying? Yes. And so, for me, it was it was hard for me to grasp it. And so I was, I was like, yo, I, 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 I'm like, yo, to the game. Back then, doing features and stuff, I felt like I that was like my form of battling. Mm. Like, like, or freestyling. So yeah. it's like somebody send you a beat, do something on. Man, I do features for free. Yeah, I ain't care. I was like, yo, come on, come on. It's for hip hop. Yeah, you, you in the name of hip hop because hip hop was my race. Yeah, it was my religion. So what? You, you coming in the name of hip hop? I East Coast stomp my a black eye with my knees. You know what I'm saying? You ain't gonna stop me. You know what I mean? You ain't gonna tell me about hip hop. You know what I mean? Well, hip hop parade used to come on, boy. Naughty by nature, boy. <laughs> you know, hip hop. Yeah. Oh, you, you lock eyes with your boy. Oh, shaking your head. You remember them days, yes, right? Yes. When it was. Yes. It was in that passion was in your yeah. soul, my G. Yeah, because you know it, what I'm saying? it wasn't for everybody back it then. It wasn't, man. But for us, it yeah. was it was all races, all creeds, all everything. It was like y'all just don't get it on the outside. If you was just down with this hip hop thing, yeah. It teach you how to dress, yeah. how to talk, how to you you don't have a whole group of friends. It was yeah. a, it was it how was to treat something. each other. It's like right? yeah, hip hop. I was trying to tell somebody this the other day and they was talking about sexism or something in hip hop okay. and I was just like yo hip hop already got this figured out yeah man Roxanne Shantae yep. already figured this out yep. when yep. she served Fruit Kwan she sure did <laughs> you know what I'm saying she served, served every... UTFO yes I said you know have y'all heard of her like yeah I think you guys might have missed some some eras where like hip hop been figured a lot of these things out you was there though yeah you see and that's the problem is a lot of us who was there not really telling those stories Telling the, the full story. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, I'm happy that you have definitely pulled up the, the, the mantle, take, taking the mantle to, to, to tell some of these stories of people who's there. Dart Adams, you know, yeah. some other people like that who who just want to just tell it right, man. Because you start realizing like, mm -hmm. huh? whoa, that ain't right. Okay. <laughs> right. You know, that ain't right. <laughs> I was there, man. That is not right. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and you yeah. just, I hear some of the moments, but you want to get in there. It's like, oh, you know, yeah. they they about to start saying, you know, okay, you know, whatever, okay, hip hop, you know, right, like, right, okay, right. okay boom. boomer, yeah, it's true, okay, hip hop, boom bap, you know, okay, know. boom bap, <laughs> yeah, there you go, that's it right there, <laughs> yeah, like because that's how you start to feel, right? But yeah, see, that's why I just get, I just don't see, you know, the sound say nothing, yeah, 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 you yeah, notice yeah. that you keep a really good low profile, but you know why media. though, man? That's what I'm saying, though, man. To get first of all, the game is to be so not told and, and i'm gonna say i'm gonna this is what yes. i mean this yeah. is what i mean by that okay i used to think like oh the game is to be sold not told it's just a funny thing to say yeah. or nigga, you're gonna pay for this for this knowledge i'm gonna give you right but that's not what it is man that's not what it is when you give away game for free right they they don't appreciate it 
That's they gonna take that game and just because they did not pay for it, mm-hmm. they are not going to apply it. The only time they're gonna apply is when they feel like, you know what? I done paid for this course. Yes. So I'm at least gonna try like the first ten things of it. Yep. You see what I'm saying? That's, That's the fact. reason why they will go to Planet Fitness over the gym that they got right down in the apartment complex, right down at the bottom. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Because that one is free. It come yeah. it come with the rent. Yeah. So they got to go buy a gym membership on top of what they already got because the game is to be sold, not told. <laughs> They're going to go to the one that they paying for, but the one that they already paying for looped in with the rent, mm. they ain't going to go to that. No, no, it's true. And they're going to give you every reason, <laughs> every excuse. <laughs> Thin line, right? Yeah. They're going to give you every one. Wow, I got to go to Planet Fitness Club. <laughs> See, they got this... Well, it be people there. Right. They got TVs on the wall. And <laughs> if I, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And so that for me is what, you know, and that's yeah. why I just don't say nothing. Yeah. It's when certain. it come to politics, I ain't going to say nothing because they, they can't even tell me who the councilman is. Yeah. You see what I mean? They can't tell me who their mayor is. That's real. Can't tell me, they can't name me their congressman. But they going to tell me everything about what's going on on a federal level. Yep. Yep. That ain't going to get your pothole fixed. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't going to get that, that red light back on. You know what I'm saying? In a storm. It's true. But you're going to complain. You see what I'm saying? So we're not going to argue balls and strikes. I'm not going to sit here and get into I'm not going to play lip wrestle with you. Yeah. Like Pimp C used to say. You see what I'm saying? I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I'm going to let you do your thing. And I'm just going to stand over here and watch. Mind my, my yeah. business. You yeah. see what I'm saying? And that's when so you say I keep a low pro. It ain't that I ain't got no opinion. Oh, I know. I done kicked it with you, man. It ain't that I, I ain't got no opinion. <laughs> it's just, but it ain't no need. Yeah. It's not a need for me to sit here and argue and, and do all of that. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's, yeah. it's not a need. Yeah. I don't, I just, I, I got it. There's not enough to gain out it's of it. It's nothing for me to gain, man. You know? Even if I felt like I was going to help somebody, but they not listening to even what I got to say. Yeah. It's true. They already just going to come with the next point that they done heard <laughs> that person say. You know what I mean? The talking head that they not even going to say that, you know, he said it. Yeah. They just going to claim it like they own, like the armchair quarterback. That's a fact. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? Lamar John, he, he should have. It was third down and long. You know, it was in a zone defense. I'm like, you act like you a coach. Yeah, yeah, learn from playing Madden. Right. Oh, this you feel what I'm saying? Oh, man, man to man coverage. <laughs> he overthrew him. You know, and they're going to come at you. So I'm not going to argue sports with you. Oh, no, no. We're nah, not nah. going to, I'm not going to nah. talk to you. Well, you know, I, 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 I cut that stuff out really after I toured with you. That's really? when I started falling back on like the 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 topics that people love to argue about. <laughs> I don't touch none of them topics okay, on right, social right, media right, no right. more. Bro, I talk it. about art. Yeah, that's it. You know, we, and, and the hustle. And they're not going to be able to. They can't it, debate me. There's no that. debate there. <laughs> there's no debate. Yeah, you're going to sports. Yeah, there's no debate. Politics, there, yeah. religion. Then you're taking somebody else's word for it. Yeah. You see, this yeah. is what I'm not going to do, Prince. Yeah. Anything that I got to take somebody else's word for, I'm very careful of what my mouth opened up to say. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? So even like science, for instance, people come to me, man, and they come straight. Well, science say and this say, and I'm like, you know, what was your biology grade in high school? What was your chemistry grade? Well, how are you telling me so much about science, my G? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What's what's AU on the periodic table? Mm-hmm. I know you don't watch the uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson show. Right. I know you, you know what I'm saying? But what do you know? You taking right. somebody, you got faith. You taking somebody's word for it, right? Yeah. It might be 100% factual, but you coming to me like you did the experiment. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You coming at me like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I'm telling you about samples, it's, or I'm telling you about music, it's because I do this. I do, pardon my French. I do shit. It's because I do this. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? I'm yeah. not telling you about something I don't know. Yeah. You feel what I mean? I'm not going to talk to you about something that I don't know, man. You know, and, and folk will want to come at me and argue. I'm like, what, what I'm what I'm going to do? Tell you about somebody else who told me about this? And yeah. then you're going to argue about somebody else who told you. And that's what we're going to do is play like ghost Th- debates. Third hand. Third hand arguments. robotic. Yeah. Or AI debates. Yeah. Off of other people's knowledge. <laughs> that's cool. But I'm just, I just, you know what I mean? Yeah. I ain't got that kind of time right now. I'm 46. <laughs> <laughs> time is short. Time is short. <laughs> you know 
what I'm saying? Well, I would be able to get busy. I yeah. would be able to get funky. Yeah. You know what I mean? Time is short. It's a fact, man. Okay, okay, we're gonna take a break and we'll be right all back. Right, all right. <laughs> Listening to Super Duty Tough Work. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Follow the podcast on SoundCloud. Peace. Shoot, I got styles already that's more complex that nobody know about. I mean, Super Duty Tough Work. Huh?